We are living in a world of scarcity. We have limited amounts of energy, resources and labour. We are competing with one another for the acquisition of scarce resources. In our capitalist society, the competition is based on how productive a personal group is at supplying the demand. The more demand one supplies, the more money one receives, enabling them to compete with others for the acquisition of goods and services. This process happens for energy, resources and labour, but not for air. We don't need to pay anyone for the air we breathe, as air is in abundance. Now imagine a world where energy, resources and labour are all in absolute abundance. A world where there is more energy, resources and labour than we could ever need. The authors of the post-scarcity world, 2050 to 2075, believe this world is possible, along with Peter Diamandis, the entrepreneur, engineer and author of Abundance, the future is better than you think. Peter's reasoning for this belief is based on the exponential growth of technology. The observation that the capacity of technology continually doubles over a certain period of time. Ray Curzelli, a leading American computer scientist, inventor and futurist, has pointed out the capacity of solar power technology is doubling roughly every two years. At the current rate, solar power will be able to meet our global energy needs by the early 2030s. Along with the exponential growth of wind power, geothermal energy and batteries for transporting energy, we are on the verge of complete energy abundance. New technology is allowing resources to be extracted that were once not economically viable, but for complete abundance of resources, it will take the mining of near-Earth approaching asteroids. We are at this point technologically capable of mining asteroids. The problem lies with how expensive it is to get into space. The Earth's gravitational field means that it takes more energy to go the first 300 kilometers than the next 300 million. Getting into space is only going to get cheaper and cheaper, with developments from companies like SpaceX, Blue Origin and Reaction Engines. Peter Diamandis and his team at Planetary Resources aim to mine near-Earth approaching asteroids. They have their first satellite in space, identifying the best asteroids to target. They also plan to create a fuel station in space by extracting hydrogen and oxygen from water on near-Earth approaching asteroids, therefore creating rocket fuel. Chris Lewicki, Planetary Resources President and Chief Engineer has said, we have every expectation that delivering water from asteroids and creating an in-space refueling economy is something that we will see in the next 10 years, even in the first half of the 2020s. Imagine the point when we have bases that can create other bases, and then these new bases can be transported to another asteroid. We could start with one base, then two, then four, eight, 16, 32, 64, 128, and so on and so on. Before long, we will be mining more resources than we could possibly need. Artificial intelligence and robotics will play a large role in the post-scarcity economy, as everything, whether it's goods or services, requires a combination of energy, resources and labour. As our technology has advanced, we have seen the productivity of one hour of labour increase as technology is doing more and more of the work. We used to farm with our own physical work. Now we have vast amounts of technology at our disposal to do the same job. We now have more food than we have ever had and people are not subjugated to the land and periodically starving. As we reach abundant energy, resources and labour, there will be a lot of pain along the way and a large loss of jobs. There is also the potential for very negative results from a post-scarcity and therefore post-job world. But it is also possible that the people of the world 
could live free and fruitful lives in complete material abundance.